there was a teacher in a school who conducted a surprise test for 20 students. Now this surprise test was conducted for a total marks of 10. And the marks obtained by the students have been given as you can see. Now if you observe closely, you will find that these marks that have been obtained by these 20 students have been collected but not arranged in any particular format. So this data that has been collected, as you can see, is known as raw data. Why is it called raw data? It is called raw data because this data, that is marks, has not been arranged in any particular format. That is, since it is randomly ordered and not in ascending order or descending order, it is known as raw data. Now, again, if you consider this raw data, you will find that each student has obtained some marks out of 10. For example, the fourth student has obtained six. The sixth student has obtained nine. The last student has obtained seven and so on. So basically what we are measuring over here is the marks obtained by the student. So over here, this marks varies from student to student and thus in this case marks is our variable because it varies from one student to another and each value of marks that is each value of the variable is called the variate. So over here 6 is a variate, 9 is a variate, 7 is a variate. So for each student the marks he or she has obtained is a variate for the variable marks. Now let us consider something that the teacher wants to do. From this data, that is raw data, the teacher wants to find out who has obtained the highest and who has obtained the lowest. Now as you can see, finding out the highest and lowest from data that has not been arranged in any manner is quite difficult. Over here we just have 20 students. Can you imagine how difficult it would be if there were a hundred students. So in order to find out the highest and lowest in an efficient manner, what do we do? We arrange the data in some particular order. So over here, as you can see, I have arranged the data in ascending order from the lowest marks obtained to the highest marks obtained. This data that has been arranged is known as array data. Arrayed data is data that is arranged in some particular order. So over here it has been arranged in ascending order. So now it is very easy for us to say who has obtained the lowest marks and what it is and who has obtained the highest marks and what it is. So the lowest marks obtained is 0 and the highest marks obtained is 9. Now after arranging the data in a particular fashion, there is another term that comes into play. That is the range of data. How can we define the range of data? The range of data is the difference between the maximum and minimum values in the given data set. So in this case, what is the maximum value? It is 9. And what is the minimum value? It is 0. Thus, 9 minus 0 will give me 9, which is the range of the data set. So as you can see from array data, it is very easy to say what the highest is and what the lowest is and thus very easy to find out the range. So again in this case you find the variate that is each mark obtained by the student. Now if you observe closely you will see that some marks have been obtained more than once or in other words the mark 6 or the variate 6 has been obtained by four students. The variate 8 again has been obtained by four students. The variate 9 has been obtained by two students. So what can we say? That these variates are occurring more frequently than let's say four or one. So here we define another term that is known as frequency. How can we define frequency? Frequency is the number of times a variate occurs in the given data set. So over here, if I ask you, what is the frequency of 7? 
Seven is a variate that is occurring more than once. And what is its frequency? Thus, from this array data, I can say that the frequency of seven is one, two, three, four, and five. Since seven has occurred five times, the frequency of seven will be five. Likewise, the frequency of six will be four. The frequency of five will be two. The frequency of zero is one, and so on. So frequency of a variate is nothing but the number of times it has occurred in the data. Using this information, we can construct a table that is known as the simple frequency distribution table. How can we construct a simple frequency distribution table? In the first column, we place the variate or the marks that have been obtained by the students. So I have placed 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 in the first column. Why? Because these are the marks that have been obtained by the individual students. Marks 2 and 3 have not been obtained by anyone, so it is not present over here. And corresponding to the marks obtained, we place the number of students who have obtained that particular mark on the second column. So in the second column, we have frequency. So let us find out how we can draw this table. For the first case, 0, the variate 0, that is the mark 0, has been obtained by one student. So we write 1 in the frequency column. Likewise, the mark 1 has been obtained again by one student. So we write 1 in the frequency column. Similarly for 4, we write 1 in the frequency column. Now as you can see over here, that 5 has been obtained by two students. That is the frequency of 5 is 2. So for 5, the variate 5, we write 2 in the frequency column. Taking another example, 7 has been obtained by 5 students. Or in other words, the frequency of 7 is 5. Thus, for the variate 7, I write frequency as 5. So in this manner, for each variate, if I write the corresponding frequency, I will get a simple frequency distribution table. Now what if we have to construct a frequency distribution table where the data set given to us is huge, like the one you can see on the screen. Now over here, we can proceed in the following ways. We can firstly arrange this data in a particular format that will give us array data. But for such a huge data set, that would take a considerable amount of time, and it would be tedious. We can also start counting from the left and see the occurrence of each of the variates. But again, there is a chance that we miss out on any one particular occurrence, and thus the entire frequency distribution table that we get would be incorrect. So now I am going to teach you another method by which we can draw a simple frequency distribution table. That method is the tally marks method. So how do we approach this method? Well, over here, I start from the beginning of the data set, and I consider each variate. So the first variate is 5, and we find that there is an occurrence of 5. So I place one tally mark adjacent to 5. In a similar manner, I proceed forward. I find that variate 4 has occurred, so I place a tally mark beside 4. In a similar manner, we find 3, so I place one tally mark beside 3. I have 2, I place a tally mark beside 2. So we have covered 5, 4, 3, 2. Now we come to 1. So again, I place a tally mark beside 1. Now we have an occurrence of another 1. So I place another tally mark beside the tally mark I had already placed. Again, I have an occurrence of 2. So I place another tally mark beside the previous tally mark of 2. We have another 5. So I place another tally mark over here. We have a 4. So I place a tally mark over here. We have another 5. So again, I place a tally mark beside the previous tally mark. We have a 6. I place a tally mark. We have another 6. I place another tally mark. We have a 3. 
I place a tally mark beside 3. We have a 2. I place a tally mark beside 2. I have another 5. So I place a tally mark beside 5. I have now a 4. So again I place a tally mark beside 4. I have a 3. So here comes another tally mark. I have another 2. So I place a tally mark for this 2. Now you find that there are 4 tally marks placed beside 2. And we have a fifth occurrence of 2 over here. Now you might be wondering whether we go on placing tally marks beside 2. Now obviously we can go on placing the tally marks adjacent to one another. But there is a chance again that while counting these tally marks, you might make a mistake. So how do we avoid that? When we come to the fifth occurrence of any variate, we simply cross out in this manner the four tally marks that we had previously obtained. So for the fifth occurrence of the variate, we have crossed out these four tally marks. So this entire block represents a block of five, which implies that two has occurred five times. So moving on, we have another occurrence of 4. So I place a tally mark beside 4. I have another occurrence of 5. Now again in this case you will notice that I already had 4 occurrences of 5. Now instead of placing a tally mark beside 5, I simply cross out the 4 tally marks which indicates that 5 has also occurred 5 times. So this gives me 5. Now I have another occurrence of 1, so I place a tally mark over here. I have another occurrence of 3, so I place a tally mark here. And I have an occurrence of 2. So once I have obtained a block of 5, I proceed in a similar manner with the tally marks. So this crossing out of 4 tally marks occurs every fifth occurrence of a particular variate. And in this manner we continue for the second line as well as the third line. And this is what we get. We have drawn the tally marks for all the variates that has been considered. So now, by a simple look at these tally marks, you will be easily able to say what the frequency of the respective variates are. Recall that I told you each block of this nature represents a block of five. So over here you find four tally marks crossed out by one. And that represents a block of 5. So one look at this will give you the frequency as 7. 5 plus 2. For variate 2, we have 3 such blocks. 5 plus 5 plus 5. This gives us 15. For variate 3, we have 5 plus 5 plus 3. That is 13. For variate 4, we have 5 plus 5 plus 1, that is 11. For variate 5, we have 5 plus 4, so that is 9. And for the last variate 6, we have a block of 5, so this is 5. You will notice that with the help of these tally marks, we were easily able to write the frequency simply by considering these blocks. So as you can see, it is much easier and it also eliminates the chance of any mistake occurring due to counting of the variates. So with the help of tally marks, also the table that we have obtained is known as the simple frequency distribution table. And this is another way of representing data when the data set given to us is huge.